as just solely their therapist. I had too many ethical boundaries that I had to withstand and uphold that kept me closed in. So I decided that I wanted to start Essence of Healing and I provide groups, anger management, life skills, adolescent transition. I have a girls group soon. I'm gonna have a boys group where we talk about hygiene, um, building character, body image, and things of that nature. So that's a little bit about Essence of Healing, but let's talk about mental health today. So I am a mental health therapist and I am in therapy. It's important for me to share that with you guys. And the reason that it's important is because I want to build a sense of normalcy around it. Um, there's a stigma when we talk about mental health. People attach it to you being crazy. People attach it to you being weak. They attach it to you being incompetent. They attach it to you just not, just being unstable and incapable. And I'm here to just share with you guys that that is not the case. I've been in therapy two times in my life. The first time I was being reactive. I was in a deep depression. I had just finished college and undergrad. I had my degree. I had a beautiful young daughter. I had just started entry level into a federal agency. Many people would have looked at me and said, what is there to be depressed about? But I was. I got my degree and I thought, all right, now the jobs are just gonna be falling at my feet. I'm ready. But when I left, the only thing I got was a note from financial aid saying it was time to pay your bills. <laughs> so I was worried, I was stressed. I didn't know what to do. I didn't wanna be a product of my environment. I wanted to be successful. And so I said, you know what, let me do the thing that I went to school to do. Let me go and talk to a therapist. So a sidebar, I wanted to find a therapist that looked like me, right? Where they'll be able to understand what it is that I go through. And when I was looking for a therapist, this was before social media where you could just look on and, and find a, a portfolio and see their picture. All I had was just reading words to figure out who was the best fit for me. And so when I read the profile, I saw that she grew up on Stratford and North. And I was like, oh. Oh, she won't understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> I was like, let me call her. So I spoke to her. She was extremely professional. I was like, all right. I made my appointment. I was nervous. But I went. And when I walked in her office, she was a little white old woman. <laughs> and she did live on Stratford in North. But it was before the riot. And I was like, who is this? And I said, you know what? I said, you know what? Let me give her a shot. And she helped me out tremendously. She taught me how to pay attention to my body. You know, I can't sleep when I'm a worry, I'm a worry ward. And I can't sleep when that happens. Um, when I was depressed, I called out from work for like 30 days straight. I was about to lose my job. I could not get out of bed and I still had to take care of my daughter. And so she helped me get through all of that even though she didn't look like me. And so when I bring it to recent times, um, I decided to go to therapy because I needed help navigating personal relationships. Not because I was depressed, not because I was sad or didn't know what my next plan was, but simply because I just wanted to be a better person and have, you know, be able to interact with the people around me in a more healthy way. And so because I knew what, um, I had the, the skills and I now had the ability to pay attention to, pay attention to my body, I now needed to know how to set boundaries, you know, with people that are around me. And so that's what, I was proactive in that sense. Before I got depressed, before I couldn't get out of bed, before I self-sabotaged. <coughs> and so I just want to say to you guys that, one, if you are in therapy, kudos to you because it's not easy. It's hard work and it takes courage. But if you are not in therapy, thinking about it, I encourage you to do it. But at what point are you willing to do it? Are you gonna be proactive or are you gonna be reactive? In any way, it's gonna be uh, beneficial, right? But we don't wanna take it to the point of when we're just, when it's close to being too late. My second point is your therapist don't have to look like you in order for them to do good work. I know it might make you feel comfortable, it might make you feel safe, but they don't have to look like you 
to make sure that you do. And my other point is that your mental health is yours, it's your responsibility. And it's yours to act on. It's nobody else's. People laugh like you're, you're depressed because you have a you got your degree. How does that make sense? But it's mine. Mental health comes in all different shapes, forms, sizes. It looks differently. It exposes differently. It's different. And so don't let people shame you for it. Don't shame yourself. So I say to you all, just remember my line is, I, I like to pour into the cups of others. So I'm gonna leave you with pour into your own cup mm -hmm. by going to seek therapy and, and investing in your mental health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.